So I'm Sandy Thompson, from, um, and I'm the head of digital research services at the University of Houston Libraries. And I'm a co-author on this presentation with my colleague, Claude Willen, who is the director of the Digital Research Commons. Claude couldn't be here today, but he uh, appreciates your attendance. I know he's looking forward to hearing uh, back more on the, the conversation. So today I'm going to briefly describe the process that we went through at the University of Houston Libraries to launch the, the Digital Research Commons. Most of this presentation is going to be on the background and the planning of um, sort of the process of launching. Um, you'll get to see some photos of like equipment and rooms, but that's not the intent of this uh, conversation for the most part. But we will talk briefly about developing the facility as well. And I'll close out by outlining some initial um, expertise in programming that exists in the space and sharing the lessons we've learned um, being a semester in so far. So to provide you all with some context, um, First of all, the University of Houston is a Carnegie designated tier one doctoral granting public research university. Uh, this is a screenshot from the website at UH. You can see there are um, just over 45,000 students enrolled, undergraduate and graduate, with 2,600 faculty and over 200 undergraduate and um, graduate programs. So it's within this context um, that we first noticed the growing demand and need for um, digital scholarship services and expertise um, over time. And in 2013, the libraries made its first sort of, um, I think, intentional move towards um, understanding and meeting some of these needs uh, when they hired a social sciences data liaison librarian. Um, who collaborated really closely with faculty on projects uh, and class assignments using a variety of tools, techniques, and methodologies that fold largely into the umbrella of digital scholarship. So from their uh, work, we were able to begin to see some patterns um, uh, that, uh, that sort of that person helped collect. And those patterns um, began to show some emerging digital scholarship services needs. Um, so for example, during the 2014-2015 academic year, faculty researchers collaborated with liaison librarians on 23 long-term data service uh, projects. With the caveat of knowing that long-term means, and I have to read this because I never remember, it's defined as 30 library staff hours with a high impact on faculty research outcomes. Many of these involved consultations that focused on identifying appropriate data sets, manipulating data for mapping or visualization purposes and exercises, offering instruction and software and interfaces um, needed to compute and display data. And the high demand for these consultations suggested a growing, again, need uh, for the libraries to begin to, to think about. At the same time, there are a whole host of other services and needs that we know we weren't necessarily fulfilling, um, nor were other units on campus, like implementing data management practices, particularly data access, storage, preservation, and description, and exposing researchers to intellectual property and author rights issues. And those also demonstrated, again, a growing need um, for these kinds of suites of services. So this prompted li the libraries to begin planning a more intentional and comprehensive program for digital scholarship services. And in many ways, the launch of the Digital Research Commons is one of those milestones, probably a major milestone along the way to understanding and fulfilling those needs. But the development of the Digital Research Commons um, did certainly not happen overnight. And if I could bestow a few nuggets of wisdom to, uh, to you all today. The first piece would be that this was not an overnight process. The development took multiple years with contributions coming from a whole host, a whole variety of different stakeholders within, and, uh, within the libraries and within the campus community. So I want to spend some time today talking about some of those groups that made that, that process of launching the Digital Research Commons possible. 
And in particular, within the libraries, there were three groups. In 2015, there was the formation of an ad hoc digital scholarship working group. In 2016, there was um, a new group called the Digital, Services, Digital Scholarship Services Team, which we affectionately call DIST. And in 2017, the Digital Research Commons Engagement Team. So the ad hoc group uh, that formed in 2015 was comprised of 15 librarians, staff members, and administrators who came together to discuss the possibilities of digital scholarship. So over the course of several months, the group compiled data snapshots of the current digital scholarship partnerships that existed between librarians and faculty. And the scope and extent of these services offered by the, li the, the scope and extent of the services offered by the libraries and what preliminary needs we, we could identify from this process. So while this group identified this sort of anecdotal evidence, uh, for supporting new programs and resources, additional research was really required to, to uh, move forward in an informed, data-driven way. Uh, so in sort of true librarian form, uh, this group recommended that another group uh, form <laughs> uh, and look more closely at uh, the data and the needs to formulate a strategy moving forward. And true to form, uh, Libraries Administration took that advice and charged a new group, DIST, or the Digital Scholarship Services Team, to enact these recommendations. DIST selected three methods for gathering data about digital scholarship needs. The group first conducted a series of focus groups, both internal to the libraries and external to the campus, to understand what users were doing and how they were doing it. We reviewed um, services and resources provided by peer and aspirational institutions to have an understanding of the lay of the landscape. And we also did an environmental scan on the UH campus uh, to understand the, what the community was doing and to again identify where there may be unmet needs. From that data collection process, uh, we identified some top areas of interest um, that we knew we wanted to address over time. And some of those included a dedicated space for digital scholarship, and with that, a host of technologies that may not be found elsewhere or may not be found as prominently elsewhere. Assistance with management and use of data, for example, uh, assistance with data management, data plans, data description, data storage, et cetera. Expanded assistance with GIS, data visualization, and statistical analysis and an increased infrastructure for acquiring and hosting uh, research data. So after analyzing these results, DIST developed the following set of recommendations as a roadmap for implementing digital scholarship services. And ultimately, although not at first, we thought, uh, building a physical center to locate these services within. The recommendations were divided into a series of phases uh, with a corresponding set of services, staffing, and space components included in every phase. Um, you can't really, uh, and also we included a sort of preliminary budget uh, focused around the first three phases. And I'm not sure how well you can see this, but phase one was sort of broken into um, developing a marketing sort of strategy and a brand around digital scholarship. Um, and communicating that out. Phase two was formalizing a unit within the libraries to um, carry this, these um, initiatives forward and hiring the expertise needed to do that. Phase three was a uh, plan to build the space to house this and to create a community um, across campus in a central location. And phase four was to consolidate some of the other existing services and um, opportunities within the libraries within that space. And each phase had a very sort of different timeline. Some of them overlapped. The idea was that it, it, should, have, it should be iterative and um, it should uh, sort of build upon one another using evidence from the previous phase to inform the next. But along the way, uh, the work of DIST moved in parallel with a larger initiative of the libraries to develop its 2017 to 2021 strategic plan. 
And uh, really remarkably, some of the DIST recommendations integrated into that library strategic plan. And in particular, we have four goals in the strategic plan. One of those goals um, is focused specifically on advancing research productivity. And this particular goal was heavily influenced by expanding digital scholarship services. And because of this integration, the priority and timeline for developing, in particular, physical space, in conjunction with some generous support from the University of Houston's Division of Research, accelerated and rearranged the tasks that, that this team worked so hard to orchestrate. Um, and so the establishment of a formal department and uh, the establishment of a physical space became far more prominent uh, far sooner than we had anticipated. So that led to a third group, uh, the Digital Research Commons Engagement Team. Because there was this new focus on space and on moving things forward in a more uh, accelerated pace, uh, this group got together um, to identify needs uh, by drawing on some of the existing data that we had already collected and also by drawing on um, other um, libraries' data that existed through user surveys. Um, drew, drew upon all those sources to identify needs um, that would then be uh, used to generate UH-specific use cases for the kinds of space, technology, and software needs we knew we would need to fulfill in a new space. So those use cases compiled uh, by the engagement team fueled the space and technology decisions we made in the digital research commons. With the work of this group, um, we had the high hopes uh, of launching uh, this space in the fall 2017 semester. Uh, Mother Nature had other plans uh, for the University of Houston and for the city of Houston. Um, and I think a week in, maybe two weeks into that semester, a little uh, phenomenon called Hurricane Harvey hit um, and delayed our, our plans. Uh, but we were happy to be able to launch this space this semester in January of 2018. Um, the Space itself is sort of uh, intended to be multi-purpose with, um, and I'm not a space person, I don't understand space lingo, but I learned that there are neighborhoods and spaces. Um, and this, uh, the Digital Research Commons has several neighborhoods, including small and medium-sized group uh, areas to meet and to collaborate, uh, computer kiosks with uh, higher-end computing capabilities, um, informal or casual meeting areas to sustain and um, cultivate that sense of community and individual workspaces for those who um, are I guess digging into their data and need to do it alone. Almost everything is on wheels, it's adaptable, it's movable, it's made to be functional and to meet the, the needs of a particular group uh, at, at that point. We also have invested in um, screens to, do, to make a visualization wall, and that, while still in progress, will enhance the kind of um, interactions and um, research available in the space. So along the way, um, we certainly had to think about what it takes to make a viable space that uh, could begin to meet some of these growing needs that we've identified over multiple years and multiple groups. But at the same time, we also had to build the expertise and the suite of services that um, will, would make that, that space relevant to folks. So we began by hiring two additional librarians to assist with the development of digital research uh, services. Uh, being a, one being a digital scholarship coordinator and the other being Claude Willen, who is the director of the Digital Research Commons. Uh, semester in, uh, our sort of startup philosophy has emphasized establishing a broad set of opportunities for those interested in digital scholarship. Um, and much of the work we've done has been outreach driven. So in the first two months, um, the director, Claude, held over 20 one-on-one -on -one meetings uh, with faculty to understand their needs and to begin to cultivate some of the research agendas that could drive uh, the research commons moving forward.
Along the way, we've also um, worked to build some infrastructure within um, the commons to um, both be a little more organized about how we do things and also to communicate out the, the sort of rationale, the purpose, and the direction that this space and suite of services are moving uh, going forward. So the DRC director developed a charter, which is the, our guiding document over this first year. Uh, has multiple, it's intended for multiple audiences, including libraries administration and um, our faculty and student stakeholders. The document explains what the DRC is and how uh, we intend to operate it over the first year. It outlines some critical logistical and programming de details. Um, it includes an overview of um, some of the new initiatives that we've started, one being a sponsored projects program, which I'll discuss in a, in a second. It also identifies the key stakeholders that we think should be aware of one another, both inside the library and uh, on campus. And within the document, we've also sort of given a preliminary list of programming that we think would be important, and we've um, given a timeline for how we intend to unveil that, that programming. And finally, it suggests um, sort of potential future avenues of collaboration and, and work moving forward. So critical to enacting that um, charter uh, is being able to sort of um, share the expertise we now have in-house. So after formal approval of the charter, uh, the director moved forward with implementing the initiatives outlined in the document. And um, as, you, as you can see, he's been pretty busy this semester. Um, he's teaching a series of workshops for all kinds of general audiences to be um, updated and or maybe um, be introduced to some of the tools and functionalities and methodologies used in popular digital scholarship research. He coordinates a monthly reading group for anyone on campus who is interested in becoming more engaged in these conversations and who is interested in becoming part of the community of digital scholarship on campus. Uh, he's been able to raise the profile of the, day to, of the DRC by inviting classes to come into the space um, and he teaches sort of one-off sessions during those classes. He also goes to um, meet them where they are and give lectures on specific topics in classes. Um, he's also um, collaborated with the um, d uh, department head of the English department to um, offer a formal four-credit course in digital humanities for graduate students both last fall and upcoming this fall. And in addition, he works really closely with his graduate assistant to um, track all of the various projects that we have underway. And again, I'll get to that in a second. Um, and also works with walk-in consultations during open hours um, that we hold weekly for the research commons. So I mentioned he does some workshops. Um, just for your sort of information, the first slate of workshops this semester held were around network analysis one and two, data visualization one and two, topic modeling, data cleaning, and GIS. I also mentioned that a core part of how we are um, implementing and moving forward the um, goals of the Digital Research Commons is through the Sponsored Project Program. This was launched uh, this semester in January of 2018. It's a call for projects process where we offer, um, for those projects accepted, um, funding from the libraries to execute a formal project proposal. Um, and as such, um, those projects, uh, once approved, have to articulate a plan for providing a minimal viable product, an MVP, by um, August of 2018. And we, uh, and so the, the list of projects are listed here. We were able to fund six this first round. Um, all of various sort of interesting uh, topics. Uh, but we see the benefits as sort of several fold. Um, we certainly think that this kind of work, um, by giving faculty and students the ability to um, pursue their projects, expands the visibility and the utility of the digital research commons. It, 
sort of creates a um, built-in audience of sorts and generates additional need moving forward. Um, it also helps to indicate uh, a larger shift, I think, in the world of libraries, um, where libraries are more and more being committed to fostering scholarship from within the library itself. Um, and we think it's helping to build, again, that broad community of digital scholarship um, enthusiasts on campus. So we've been around for about four months now, officially. Um, uh, at the close of this semester, we thought it was a natural point to sort of take stock and reflect on where we've been for the first few months. And so our next steps in terms of uh, moving forward uh, are uh, probably more um, uh, housekeeping than anything else. Uh, we're making sure that we have mechanisms to gather feedback on the performance of the Digital Research Commons. And part of that charter that we established um, moving forward for our first year created two mechanisms to do that uh, intentionally. There are two teams that we have set up. One is an external team made up of um, faculty stakeholders primarily, so those who are doing direct research, their, their um, department heads, and a few representatives from the Division of Research make up that team, and we consult with them periodically to gauge the temperature and to see um, their sort of feedback as we move forward. We also have an internal libraries team made up of those librarians who have direct stakeholder responsibilities or see themselves uh, directly in the work of digital scholarship to also sort of test the pulse of what they hear and what they see um, in their roles. That in addition to some um, exercises that we're just now beginning to develop a framework for assessing um, the whole host of opportunities that we've offered. Um, will be sort of our, um, on our agenda over the next few months. I'm not sure how many people have been paying attention to um, a recent flurry of conversation on the digital scholarship um, um, sections listserv for ACRL, but um, there is a, a growing conversation right now on how do we assess digital scholarship services? What are the metrics we use? Um, what defines um, a successful project or a successful service. And so we're going to be engaging in some of those thorny, um, interesting questions over the next coming months. I anticipate that we, we won't have a sort of one, one size fits all sort of set of assessment criteria. Um, and to sort of uh, be able to build those metrics moving forward will take some conversations with a whole host of stakeholders. So that could be a whole other uh, presentation you all may be clued into at some point. And all of this work is building towards um, helping us create a much larger strategic initiative moving forward through a formal um, three-year strategic plan that will help us take the, the work that we've built to date through the charter uh, and expand it moving forward. So along the way, the launch of the Digital Research Commons has surfaced some cultural shifts within our library and I think um, resembles similar cultural shifts occurring all across library land. Um, the DRC is one of the first research centers, uh, I, what I would call research center within uh, the libraries itself. And as such is helping to sort of move us with so many other libraries being in the same scenario from a sense of knowledge curation, uh, which is a pretty traditional value of, of academic libraries, to a scenario or a situation of knowledge production. And we're hoping that the budgetary discretion that we have will allow us to continue to um, move outside those typical library faculty partnerships um, with initiatives like the sponsored project programs to continue to fuel that momentum of moving towards knowledge production. So this initial period, um, this first semester, has also given us time to reflect on some of the lessons we've learned along the way. Um, as I showed you, our director is really busy doing some incredible, really engaging, um, innovative things for the University of Houston. 
Uh, but th the director expertise only model is not sustainable uh, beyond maybe a few more semesters. So we have to begin thinking about what, um, what priorities and areas of focus the director should be engaged in and how do we leverage the talent and the leadership we have in the libraries to expand that broad base of knowledge even more. We also noticed that um, culture shift is slow. Changing culture takes time. Um, and becoming a center of knowledge production will take time both for other librarians, internal and faculty, external to the libraries, to acknowledge and to understand. We've also learned a thing or two about sort of the idea of integration um, and integrating services, uh, some more challenging than others. Um, it's interesting to take years to plan a, a, a space and a suite of services and to enact that and not have a director there to help along the way. Um, so we certainly made some de decisions that uh, don't necessarily always align with um, the director's perspective. So we have to sort of have conversations around why some decisions were made and how we can, um, how we can sort of change um, change some ideas moving forward, I would say. And again, another nugget of wisdom, if I could leave you with maybe the most important dealing with integration, is um, we have really seen the power, the true power of integrating um, a suite of services in a space like the Digital Research Commons into a strategic, a library strategic plan. It, um, I can't emphasize that enough. Having digital scholarship integrated into this has made it um, a reality. It's given it the resources it needs to grow, and it's created buy-in across the library that um, may have taken um, more time, energy, and effort to develop uh, without um, the sort of framework of a strategic plan. So this is just the beginning. Um, Claude and I look forward to sharing more about uh, this process as we move forward um, and uh, sharing out the stories of the Digital Research Commons um, beyond its first semester. So here are, here's our contact information. Always feel free to reach out to me or to Claude if you have questions or um, if you would like additional information. And with that, I've left you like three minutes for questions. <laughs>